So I've been working on the redstone entrance to the necropolis and uh, I think this is pretty cool. And there we go. So this is a 7x7 door, uh, powered by flying machines. There are four flying machines in total. And so you have this opening, the opening two flying machines here, the uh, station that makes it them uh, return, these two here. Then here we have the closing two flying machines and these two are the stations that make the flying machines return home. Oh, so if we take some butons, let's like this. So if I click this, this will open the door. As you can see they fly over with the door. Then they are set to return. And that's that. And these uh, reset them because uh, this uh, these need them. These two observers needs to be triggered once when it returns, uh, and that will extend these two pistons, which uh, carries all of the pistons moving the door. Because if we don't trigger those an extra time, these things will be one block further this way, and then the a flying machine can't start because this will push first and it will try to push all the flying machines plus all of these blocks which is of course way too much so that's why we need this machinery here that what it is is basically it's a um, this observer here detects when this observer comes here sends a signal with quite a bit of delay here up here which cuts it off into a quick signal so that we don't get a double pulse and uh, and uh, this will extend, which triggers this observer, which uh, once, which uh, just extends this one, like really quick back and forth. Since we cut off the signal, just goes really quick back and forth and leaves the block behind. So that is the design there. And if we do this, you can see it close. And then the machines return, and uh, that is that's that. Now we just have to build it in survival, which is gonna be a bit of a struggle. Uh, okay, how big is it? We need a hole that is. Oh, don't need all of this. I like to put those in the floor to indicate where. They are, but there we go. Okay, and uh, let's see. So, I want to have some space to work with, so we will extend it. We will say that that's it, okay? So, from now, let's take uh, concrete, take pink. That's easy to see, and it's not easy to confuse with the redstone. Okay. And we need a hole to be like that. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let me measure this distance. I put in a little change. Just kind of a. a I don't know what to call it. This thing here. It basically prevents you from breaking the system by being silly. So uh, the way it works is that you can only trigger the side which ha currently have the door. So the door is on this side here now. So the button there 
the signal can go through here. And then when the door reaches the other side, which is detected by this, this part, it sends a signal which triggers this piston, which moves this row of blocks over, which makes this not work anymore because there's no block connecting redstone dust on the other side with this. Oops. And it moves this slab into this position, which means that that and this uh, will work. So if we trigger this one now, you can see it over. It over earlier than you probably should have. Why did you, where did that signal come from? Let's investigate this. Okay, so this signal can go through now, this cannot. Which, of course if I click there it will, but if I click this one, the signal will not go past that point. But this one will. So when exactly does it, how does it trigger so soon, let's say. In theory, whenever there is a block above this, that one should extend. Oh, yes, I know. Of course, it's the same problem I had earlier. And that is solved. Line. Oh, I managed to place the repeater in exactly the spot that uh, would be bad if it wasn't. Okay, so now we can close the door. And when the door reaches all the way, that those blocks should move over. There we go. And that indicates that we can open the door and those blocks should move over when it reaches the open position. Yes! Okay, good. Now we have a functioning 7x7 flying machine weird clunky door thing. Uh, okay. That took a long time. There we go, the area for our door machinery have been dug out. Now we actually need to build it. I was collecting materials for our funky door and uh, I got the repeaters, I got slime, I got all the pistons, got lots of... Are you okay? Okay, I got lots of droppers uh, which we need a uh, yeah, of course, the uh, torches, redstone torches, I mean, and uh, redstone dust, all that is, got all of that. And I've got one thing, observers, which is like one of the most important parts of flying machines. You need pistons, slime blocks, observers, and I've got observers. Uh, but that's okay, I, I'm back at our storage room here to get more, or to, to get any, because we don't have any at uh, our place. So, I went to our quartz box and we don't have any quartz at all. Like, literally zero. But, and there's a big but here. We might have it in our new storage room. So we're gonna check that, but I'm gonna, another big but, I'm gonna assume that we are very low anyways, and gonna have to mine some. Okay, where's quartz? That's not quartz. Where's red? Here. Yes, that's not enough. I wanted to make a whole stack. This is almost a whole stack, but not quite enough. So let's grab ourselves a fortune pickaxe. Let's put some temporary storage in here. 
We have our fortune figures. Yep. I rename all my pickaxes to either be work, fort, or silk, so that I can see them when I'm going through them like this. Which one is which? And uh, which direction? I think white, north should be nether. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Turns out that I did have enough quartz because you need one quart to redstone. I thought you needed two quartz, one redstone. But that's okay. Better to have too much than too little. And I also got some uh, this stuff. We have a lot of redstone in various places. One of those places being the place where we're building this redstone door. So I'm just gonna go over there and make more observers. The return stations have been built. I had to rebuild them three times because I'm a fool, but that's okay. And the uh, redstone wire can be just connected. I'm thinking we're gonna have one input because uh, because of this system here we put in that kinda makes it foolproof. In theory at least. We should be able to have just a single input that will trigger the one that can be triggered and yeah, shouldn't break anything. So that is good. And uh, yes, the return stations have been built. The wires are ready. This one will go to the flying machine on that side, the closing flying machine. And this wire here will go to the opening flying machine that will be here. So that's what we're doing next. That should be the first flying machine here built. Now we need to make the thing that makes it do things when it comes back. Yeah! That's that. Now the next one. Okay, so this, the opening flying machines should be finished. That stone block is not supposed to be there. Good thing. I spotted that. Okay. Okay. Is there anything wrong here that I can spot? No. I am terrified to try it though. Also, I don't have a button. Okay, first test. I am holding my thumb and crossing my fingers. Here we go. <laughs> I am so good at redstone. I just realized as soon as I click the button that I never connected the button. It just ends here. It doesn't actually connect to the machine, so let's fix that. Okay, now the button is actually connected to the machine. Hopefully this goes better. Okay, here we go. What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> now that the button is actually connected, let's try again. Looking good. Okay, come on, come on. Work, 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 work. Yes, it's working. It is working. Please stop at the right place. That looked very good. Yes, it worked perfect. It is working. That should be the second flying machine done. So, and it should be connected as well. So, let's try it. No, 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 don't break, don't break, don't break, please don't break. It broke. Huh? I am very confused. Okay. Okay, so, um, what 
broke. Well, this shouldn't be too hard to fix. We just have to remove this one. Let's see what, what is actually part of this one. That's a good question. Okay. There we go. This got squished. Is the whole thing squished? Not sure, but if we're lucky, we can now do that. Okay, at least we can get it back. Back and we do the same. It's very wrong. Okay, I managed to divide. We got all the four main flying machines back, so that's good. Now we're gonna see without the whole part, like these other parts of the flying machine, what actually went wrong. Because currently, this should trigger only this flying machine. But that is triggered, and that is not triggered. It's good. We should. Okay. That is good. Next it should trigger those, but not those. At some point. Uh, I see. So we have a problem here that did not exist in the test world and that is that this piston is being triggered so let's reset it to that state okay in this state we are triggering this piston but it's not supposed to be triggered. So where is that coming from? Does it work if we move this line a bit back maybe? Does that make you happy, Redstone? We'll see. Oh, I know exactly why, because this thing powers this block, which powers that redstone. I don't know why that did the... Uh, how did I do that in the test world? I did it the exact same way. Huh. So... Okay, so well this is broken too, but how can we fix it? Okay, I decided to move this little one block over and have the redstone there, so this block gets powered which powers this redstone, but nothing below or beside should be powered. So let's try it again. It should power just that side, not the other side. That's it, it does. Okay, and then it's back. Okay, there we go. Things are working as they should, and they should be sent back. Yes, perfect. And uh, these parts have been put in, so let's try it again.
that looks good. Um, I was just gonna show you this. <laughs> I see that guy in the corner. Um, hello. <laughs> Are you just gonna? Okay. Can you like not kill me? Well, also die. Okay, that's one. I don't have any villagers here, so it doesn't matter to get the effect. Uh, uh, get away! Oh, hey wolf. I thought it was a skeleton first. Oh. Okay then. Well, we got another ominous banner. Some crossbows. <laughs> I am also a pincushion. But besides that, let's see what we have. So I I put in the door and I did the back side of the door. It's not pretty on the back side. I'm sorry. It's too much redstone with the flying machines. I'm very restricted to what I can do and this has been a headache trying to get this to just work and everything. So here it goes. That's pretty cool, I think. And then the flying machine goes back. And this is the inside. So this will of course be covered. This side is basically covered. You can't see any redstone except for the flying machines, of course. But this side I cannot cover because, well, there will be things here you know, that can put in some things over there. But yeah, so instead I decided to make it dark, so I slapped the floor and all blocks that don't have redstone on them in the slab. So that uh, when you are here, if you just look a little bit like it, you don't see much, it's not obvious. I will also make the walls prettier, like remove all of this uh, stuff and have smooth stone and probably have some borders, whatever, I don't know. Either way, the door has been put in. However, we're not gonna trigger this just with a button. That's not how we do things around here. We need a fancy way to open this. And when I first talked about this project, I mentioned that I want it to be like a sacrifice. You make a sacrifice and this secret door will open. So, we need a thing where we can drop an item and it will open up. I'm putting in the last piece of the redstone and this guy has to jump down. <laughs> Hello. And yeah, you can't you can't get out of here. I'm sorry. So um you can't currently finish the system because there are llamas in the system. A llama jam. We have a llama jam. Since it was a new day and I can't finish the redstone, I decided to actually cover this side up with the uh, furnaces so that we don't have a big hole. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's not super pretty, but at least it's something. Yes, you don't see as much redstone anymore. You just see the tracks for the flying machines. Uh, but yeah, I built this uh, part here that that works great to close and open. But uh, we have this button here that's supposed to open and close it from inside. But I need to place a repeater. There, and that is hard because there is a llama there. Two llamas even, and a wandering trader. <gasps> they despawned. They just vanished. That's kind of weird, but uh, good at the same time. Okay, so we need this signal to be longer because it's not reaching over there, obviously, which is. Silly thing. 
Uh, we could yes, press that one, I guess. Uh, we can move that one. Um, doesn't matter. Let's grab ourselves a uh, repetitive. Now that the door has been finished, we can actually try it out. This thing opens. Uh, so um, this is a cauldron. There's just a hopper beneath it, uh, leading to a dropper beneath here. When there is an item in the dropper, it triggers the machine. It's as simple as that. Uh, and it triggers the dropper which shoots the item back up through this block, so you can see it. So you get your item back. But it's like you make a sacrifice and the door opens. And from the inside. Open it. It does some funky stuff up there, but that's okay. And now we have our entrance completed to the necropolis. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.